Hi guys, welcome back to the farm in Thailand. We're Lee and Toon. And today we've got another first yet again for you guys. Um, we've carried out an official poll. That's right. Um, for those of you out there that are thinking about moving to Thailand, we're broaching the subject of why it might be an idea to think about moving out to some rural location in Thailand rather than the, uh, the mainstream cities like Bangkok, Pattaya and so on. Um, now, our source, we've polled over 300 people, I shit you not. So where are these people from? They're from all over the world, living in rural Thailand. So you're not just listening to my um, opinion, guys, because you've got to remember, I am just one man. I know it's hard to bear that in mind sometimes. So uh, these guys that have kindly given us their opinion are from our Facebook group, Rural Life in Thailand. And I just asked them, if you don't mind, fellas, could you give us a bit of a breakdown on what you think are the main advantages and disadvantages of living out in rural Thailand? So a lot of these guys have been out here for donkey's years. Some of them are incredibly old, um, but they're looking good on it. So without further ado, let's look at the positives. I'm gonna ditch all the, uh, the negatives um, and we'll stick them on a separate one because what I've done is shortlisted 30 of them for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep on walking around um, as we're doing this. So we could uh, we could go arse over to it. We still haven't got it all balanced here. So at number one, this is in no particular order other than what we were given. So a more relaxed lifestyle. Well, of course, that's gotta be the case, isn't it? I mean, if you can't relax out here in rural Thailand, there is something seriously wound up tight inside you. Um, I mean, to say you're relaxed, it's, it's, you're almost horizontal out here. But I suppose it's what you're used to. It may take you quite a bit of time to get used to relaxing. And although that sounds silly, when you've been used to grafting nine to five, five, six, seven days a week for most of your working life, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. Well, I found it a bit of a challenge to take your foot off the gas and actually start relaxing. So I, I'm, I'm with them on that one, that's for sure. I probably don't agree with all of them, but most of them I do. Less road rage. Um, I was guilty of this in the, uh, the UK, I have to admit. Um, out here, the first few months are a challenge. Most of you will know that. Um, the, uh, the, the general standard of driving out in Thailand, it, it beggars belief. But out in the rural areas, it's a little bit less, how could we say, it's still, it's still hairy, shall we say, but it's a little less frantic. You do get the farm machinery um, driving at five miles an hour. Um, you do get the mopeds coming the wrong way. Uh, all those sorts of things, the potholes are a nightmare, but the, the general average speed of the traffic is so low. Um, you can touch wood, you can see uh, danger well in advance. Some of the things that you do have to be really careful of is, is people driving farm machinery like the Dak Daks without any lights whatsoever. Um, so you do have to be aware of that sort of thing. The potholes, they'll have you over your handlebars on your moped, quick smart. So I personally found it quite a bit of a challenge um, when I first started driving out here. Um, we haven't got the motor anymore, but I still drive the uh, ride the moped and it, that, that, it's just not a problem. You just get used to it. So I find it not an issue riding around now. Uh, at number three, good growing weather all year round. I mean, it is quite changeable in Thailand, but you can grow shed loads of stuff every single month of the year. I mean, it is ridiculous how quick stuff grows out here. Um, that's if you can get the seeds to germinate, which is another issue altogether. Generally speaking, the stuff that we've purchased seed-wise has been totally pants. But you can get some very, very good yields on, on crops in a very, very short space of time. So uh, 
just give it a try you might need to put some um, some fairly cheap netting above where you're growing stuff depending on where it is and and what and see what seasons you're growing in but yeah that's uh it's really good i've touched upon it a few times before um that the use of chemicals in thailand is it's just bonkers it is really out of hand in a lot of areas and you can taste it on your food i've said this about six months ago um so growing your own we've found a huge difference in taste i mean we used to grow our own back in the uk as well for about eight or nine years so it doesn't matter where you are in the world if you grow your own you get the taste and the health benefits thrown in as well i'm going to do a bit of a u-turn and start heading back the reason being is uh toons had to shoot off and take a little niece to the uh to the hospital she hasn't been a very happy bunny so uh, she's just puked up her uh, afternoon milk i don't want to walk too far away from the house because our dogs are bloody useless okay the next one may be a bit of a surprise for some of you at number four is carrying a machete so i do worry about some people but i know this guy <laughs> fairly well from the group and uh we've chatted quite a bit because he's doing um a few things quite similar to to me and to here uh, a guy called pete and yeah I, i'm with him on this there's nothing there's nothing quite like walking around your land with a chopper in your hand um it's great i mean they're, they're such such a an essential tool for you to have oh, i'm not playing on words on purpose on this um but there's always something to cut trim kill skin whatever um so you know trimming a, a banana tree when you go past you know it's just never ending what you need to do so rather than traipse back to your house or your tool shed every time slap on your uh, your shank and uh, get out there and start hacking things to pieces you obviously look like mick dundee so that's a, a bonus as well but yeah carry a machete at number four uh inexpensive well that's quite a broad broad topic what's inexpensive is everything inexpensive well compared to living in the city and i haven't lived in a city in in thailand but i used to holiday in quite a few built-up areas and yeah of course the touristy areas and the popular areas you're going to pay more on just about everything aren't you uh probably your beers and your 7-eleven are about the same price as out here but generally speaking everything's a little bit cheaper um not as cheap as it used to be but you could say that about everywhere in the world when i first started coming out to thailand you were getting the high 70s for your bar to, to against a, a, a good old british pound now you know you, you're lucky to get over you know low 40s you really are and of course the thai economy hasn't been performing quite as bad as the uk so uh prices have increased here and of course the pound has done pants so they've been going in opposite directions but it's still fairly cheap i mean we've seen the differences in in prices in a short space of time out here you know even when you're at the market you if the price doesn't go up the portions go down that's for sure but you can still get a decent bowl of a uh, noodle soup for like 30 baht so it's not all bad on to number six home produce well, we've sort of touched upon that already um but for anyone that likes to do that sort of thing it's it's brilliant once you get your head around what's fairly easy to grow then i suppose you could start having a bash at other stuff so the easiest stuff that we've found is like your coriander your, your chilies of course but don't mention chilies to tune out there on her island terrible um but team england chilies were a piece of piss to grow your basil's a piece of piss um they probably grow too well our foot long beans brilliant so veg wise absolutely absolutely easy but you know i know that from the guys on the group some people have had a bash at doing you know your, your asparagus beetroot all those sorts of things which which of course would be a little bit more challenging um but it is possible so i not don't want to sort of like spam you with the rural, rural life thailand facebook group but um the resources that are available on there from these guys that have been doing this sort of thing for years 
it's uh, it's invaluable in my book number seven improved health well I've just completed my first year out here and I feel like a 16 year old uh, but I can't find any no, that was I'll probably cut that one out um, I, f I feel great but I tell you what those first five or six months they nearly crippled me and and two you know I'm not saying we, we did too much but our bodies weren't used to it I know Toom was suffering badly with her thyroid so her energies levels her energy levels were were quite low but my body was broken so uh, once your body gets adjusted to it or you take your foot off the gas I suppose um, then yeah you can uh, you can you can feel being more healthy well I can but again it, it depends on you doesn't it you might not be that active it might be that you're in your still in your holiday mode or you just think no this is my retirement time I'm on the I'm on the lash every night and uh, I'll be having I'll be sticking with my popcorn rather than a bowl of healthy bugs watching me uh, Premier League football highlights or whatever so it's up to you isn't it it's uh, I, I certainly don't um, lead the most healthiest of lifestyles but uh, it's it's a lot lot more healthy than what I was leading in the UK which I'm sure is the same for the rest of you guys at number eight fresh local produce now I have to say where where we are a lot of stuff that is grown is, is like mono cash crops like that like so you got your you've got your sugar cane immediately in front and then to the left and further behind you've just got rise and rise of uh, paddy fields and then you've got eucalyptus yeah you, you don't see a banana tree till you get to our places and then next to that you've got your your mini eggplant and then you turn around and then you've got your coconuts we're I wouldn't say we're an exception to the rule there's a couple of other people that are doing um, poor pan far style farming near us um, so I wouldn't say the variety is great round here unless you go to a market oh you bastards hang on guys I saved me snails didn't I or I thought I did and now they found them on this bloody pond as well thieving bloody pikeys they're those giant crane ship machine birds oh they fucking had them all see you try and help nature then nature just pisses in your eyeball so uh, yeah if I was a better shot in my catapult I don't care what anyone says they'd all be gone absolutely all be gone fucking things anyway what number were we on uh, so that was your fresh local produce yeah it's uh, the variety isn't great here uh, unless you go to the uh, like the Saturday market there's also a Wednesday market but the, the choice is a lot less there okay number nine a lower cost of daily living well we've just done costs not too long ago but daily costs so I don't know what I've got a bit of cooking oil uh, most of the produce is coming off our land um, your water and your electric is piece of piece of piss well it's, it's free here but I suppose we we get the big um, big bottles of water from from Toon's mum so that's that's pretty much free uh, what else daily cost a bit of fuel probably our probably our biggest cost really um, for us our main cost on the farm is is animal feed uh, yeah definitely it's it's bloody cheap living so uh, of course you go to we have noticed the difference when we go to Bangkok to like uh, get my mum or something like that and uh, just staying in a hotel and just getting a taxi here and there it's just it's a shock to the system but then again it was back in the UK we were out in the sticks in Cambridgeshire and any time that we went to London for a day out or something Ah, bloody rip your arm off the prices there. Right, where can we walk this time? Let's go past Coco Chanel and then we'll uh, we'll hang a left. 
In at number 10, a slower pace of life. Geez, well, it's as slow as you want to make it. It really is. Um, for us, of course, we can't go too slow because your, your chores, just, just taking care of your animals takes us a few hours a day. Your morning and your evening, there's, a, there's an afternoon feed for the ducks as well. And water is a big thing for the, for the animals as well. You have to make sure that that's constantly topped up. So um, apart from that, we could be lazy buggers. When we were living in the village, yeah, we were like sloths, we really were. We were uh, taking it a bit too easy. Um, but then again, we knew what, what, what laid ahead, so we were probably getting a few lazy, lazy months in before we, uh, we embarked on this, you know, the farm adventure. So, you go as fast as you like. Very, very different to when we were back in the UK, Jesus. I didn't know whether I was coming or going. I think I met myself a couple of times. It's, uh, you're chasing your tail, aren't you? Number 11, helpful locals. Uh, opinions may differ on this. We've been skanked by a few locals, but on the whole, can't bloody knock them. Really, really good set of guys and women round here. Uh, they're not all thieves, which I thought most of them were when I first moved here. It's a select few, and they're mainly from another village. We've identified those now. Um, yeah, we've got we've got skanked a couple of times, um, but you live and learn. You uh, you move on. You let it go, and uh, yeah, on the whole, I, I, I just. I really rate them round here. We've been to a few of the places where Toons, uh, some of Toons brothers and sisters live, and they seem really nice as well. So um, I know everyone has different experiences living in these places. I know a lot of people have problems with their uh, their wives or the girlfriends' family or extended families and things like that. Nothing's perfect, of course, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I very, very rarely see those sorts of things. Rose-tinted glasses, you may think. Number 12, being close to nature. Wow, that's just a massive one for us. Really, that would be in my top three, I think. Uh, I mean, apart from the useless dogs like that one there, it's great being so close to nature. Um, and apart, obviously, those big cranes that keep on nicking my big snails. That is, that's a pain in the arse as well. But we're just coming up to now our hoi gab, our mussel pond next door that we pillage from time to time and we get our little fish from there and soon gets a hoi jubs, a hoi com. Yeah, so it's really uh, to the left, uh, the, the rice pad is dry at the moment. There'll be rats in there, which doesn't sound like a bonus to most people, but it's free food for our dogs and catfish. So, uh, being close to nature, I'm, uh, I love it sometimes. Well, today, today when uh, I came down to feed the, uh, the ducks and the geese and the sun was just starting to poke its head up and I just stopped for about three or four minutes to start shouting at the other end of the farm if I, if I start slacking. And I just thought, bloody hell Lee, you are lucky sometimes. And I think a lot of us are a little bit guilty of not just taking a few moments out and just to sit back or stand there and absorb the the beauty that we're living in i i we uh i don't know perhaps it's my old head from the uk again thinking if you're standing still you're not being productive you're being lazy and something's not being done so uh you do have to well some people have to tell themselves just to slow down or just to stop and uh, live in the moment a little bit more. That, that was, that's one of my main challenges since I've been here. Just sort of like easing off a little bit. Let's cut through this snaky looking area here. They owe me a bite or two, don't they? So uh, anyone that doesn't like me and what I do to snakes, if I get bit in here, you'll think it's karma and deserve it. Living life on the edge, eh? See? Nature, being close to nature is brilliant, isn't it? Thieving bastard crows. 
wildlife diversity. Oh wow, well, that's 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 linked in with that. So we can uh, we can skip that a little bit. Um, I suppose to give you the, the the diversity aspect here, the monitor lizard that we've got knocking around that's made made its home on the uh, the island. So when that island is sculptured into some accommodation hopefully in the not too distant future you may be sharing it with a family of monitor lizards at no extra charge i might add um, and the three meter python which um, used to be on booby island here but now is on one of the furthest outcrops or outcrops sort of like at the big trees uh, at the other end of the farm so there's your diversity for you two things that could give you a real belt Peaceful lifestyle. I'm 50-50 on this. When we're in the village, so you know, obviously that's rural life. It it's it was incredibly noisy. Uh, if it wasn't temple music, it was uh, music for parties, music for people passing, marriages, people for being monks. Um, and then people just generally being pissed and uh, attempting to wreck the mic on the karaoke. It was bloody noisy. So can't wait till we get on the farm, get away from all that crap. Moved here, we're in between two villages now. Slap bang. First week we got here we thought, oh my God, what have we done? But it was just the week from hell. After that, it was absolutely fine. So, yes. We've gone to the extreme and gone a bit more remote, but not all villages are quiet. Sometimes, well, when my mum first visited us out here, she struggled to adapt to it. And I said to her, when you, when you start, start your life out here, it's like an endurance test. You've got to live on sleep where and when you can get it. And just try and recharge your batteries as best you can. After a while, you start to man up a bit and um, well me and two we basically survive on about five and a half hours kip per night and really you could probably knock another half an hour or an hour off that because the dogs will be barking you know they'll see some lights or something like that or the birds start chirping and there's a couple of birds which clop just can't hack and it, it obviously hurts his ears because he just starts relentlessly barking you know, then your alarm goes off just as you're getting some good kip and you just think, geez, I have not had enough sleep. You always feel like that. You get up, you get your coffee on, and that's it, you're good to go. But I am ready for bed at about eight o'clock. The tune doesn't let me go to bed that early. Well, not unless it's my birthday. Number 15, we're halfway through already. It's flying, isn't it? Um, positive Buddhist vibe. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but I, I suppose my take on it, for what it's worth, um, what I've seen, the, the Thai people in the rural areas, and I'm not, I'm not doing them down, they are incredibly poor. And, you know, most of them, and I'm not, I'm not joking, most of them are in a shed load of debt. Certainly the ones that are farming. It's been incredibly easy for these people to, to borrow money from these big corporate outfits to get their farms going and they're just in debt up to their eyes then a crop fails and then they've got to borrow more for it and then go to a bloody loan shop and then they get some bad luck and i tell you what they just carry on you don't see them moping around you know they stub the toe it's just like oh just laugh at that they lose some money that's any money and i know it's probably not what could we say? It's probably not the best way to be being so blasé, but I tell you what, they seem to be a lot less stressed by being like that. So, I don't know whether it's the Buddhist side of things or just a Thai, Thai way of life, but uh, it's more of a, should we say, a, a can-do attitude rather than feel sorry for yourself when it all goes tits up. I, I'm like a baby, if something goes wrong, I'll, I'll throw the hammer somewhere and think, that's just my fucking luck. Always happens. Shit tools in Thailand, that's broke, blah de blah de blah. But 
Does it achieve anything? Of course it doesn't. You just get yourself wound up, don't you? You don't see a monk getting wound up. Well, it's probably because they haven't just broken a screwdriver or ratchet or something, isn't it? Okay, so look for that. That was a bit blardy blarly. Uh, le <laughs> number 16, less foreign tourists. Yeah, I <laughs> uh, have to be careful here because we want some of you to come and visit us in probably 2020 and get some money off you. Um, so we do want some tourists, but don't bloody want them staying here for too long. Can't bloody stand you lot. Uh, oh, me and Tune can't stand anyone for very long. <laughs> That's why we're in the middle of nowhere and we've got no friends. We don't care. Um, we're happy in our own skin and we like to fart and burp. We don't, we don't want people all around. I, I like to walk around with balls out sometimes. So we don't want foreigners and we don't want Thai people around here too much. Um, but yeah, I, it, I never got it, you know. I know not all of you are from the UK, of course, but I don't know why so many people from the UK go out to Spain and then all live next to each other. What's all that about? Expat communities. I think some of them, I suppose if you're super, super remote, what, what are you doing going out there and then, you know, oh, 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 I miss the expats. I want to go and live near the expats. There's no one out here to talk to. Well, don't fucking live out here then. Number 17. I am going round. Let's go the other side of the banana trees for a bit of a uh, bit of variation. There, that's much better, isn't it? Yeah. Safe with friendly locals. Um, bar one incident, and when we talk about safety, I'm just on about someone being a bit naughty. Um, one person tried to steal my wedding ring when I was absolutely bladdered at a temple party. Um, Toon had stopped drinking a few hours before, thank God and she spotted that he had quite greasy hands and what he'd done is oiled, he'd oiled his hand up and was shaking my hand um, and I was like, this is a bit fucking awkward, it's trying to shake my left hand. Everyone goes for your right hand. And he I thought he's being quite pally, he's sort of like massaging me as well on my forearm and stuff. And Toon just went up to him and grabbed his hand, smiled at him and just basically just fucked him off. Uh, she didn't tell me what would happen, what was happening uh, until the next morning. So that was probably a wise move on her behalf. But apart from that, everyone's been great to me. Um, I've had a couple of cheeky comments here and there, but they're normally just from pissheads. Uh, you, you just walk on and you forget about it. But what since we've been on the farm, who's going to come here and blah de blah to me? I don't think so. You go on anyone's land and you make trouble, you, you, it won't end well, will it? That's the beauty of being out here. I suppose it's, a lot of people are quite anti, you know, the guns in America and that sort of thing. We've oh, got to be careful here, aren't I? Um, but you go on someone's property there in the, in the middle of nowhere and you start causing trouble, then you're going to get a bloody sawn off rammed down your throat. So it's the same, it's the same out here. But no, no one makes any trouble, so. Well, it helps if you don't go looking for trouble, I suppose. Number 18, affordable land. I don't know. We bought this bloody back in the day, Jesus. I can't even remember what we paid for it, but we got a bonkers deal. We, we didn't have the money at the time, um, but it was just such a, such a crazy asking price. Um, we just had to find it. So my mum helped us out and then we just paid her back over time. Um, it's probably, I don't know, at least trebled in what, 12 years? At least trebled, probably, probably even more than that. Um, but round here land is, is cheap. Uh, we went and visited Trad and we did a, had a lovely time when Toon's bigger brother got um, married a few months ago. And uh, that place is beautiful. That is one place that Toon and I have both been to and we thought, yeah, I could live here. Um, but the prices were quite high. Um, it's probably why everyone's um, 
growing expensive um, durian fruit out there. I know places like Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, uh, you need a serious amount of cash if you, if you want to buy more than a rye or two out there and then you've got to put your property on there as well haven't you so it's uh, not everywhere rural is cheap of course but it depends what 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 dollar you've got doesn't it I and mean, if you if you're owning a shed load then sort of like 50 grand or 100 grand here doesn't doesn't seem a lot of money for for, for what you get I suppose as well you could look at it this way any price you pay for for land or property out here is expensive because it's not in your name so anything that you're paying for that isn't yours you could be of the view that uh, be of the opinion that it is expensive but that's another thing isn't it number 19 no onerous planning regulations <laughs> uh, I'm probably not the person to sort of like comment on this one because at one point I wish we did have planning regs out here, building regs, uh, because, <laughs> because then the builder would have had to have complied with them, we wouldn't have been left with what we've got now. So, <laughs> um, I, I know what they mean, it's, it's great that you could just throw something up, uh, how long it'll actually, this stuff stays on, stays standing for is, is another thing altogether, but yeah, it's nice just to, uh, well, have a go, you know, throwing at something yourself, like um, like electrical posts. Uh, I'm not sure whether that would comply with uh, UK or EU or uh, wherever else in the world standards. In at number 20, two thirds of the way, it has flown past, I'm sure you'll agree. Freedom to do your own thing, definitely. Um, I've always liked to do my own thing anyway. Uh, that's why our channel uh, is pretty much out there on its own um, I, ju I just I love it you, you get up you know what you've got to do first thing in the morning and after that you can just sit down while you're having a brew right missus what we're gonna do today do you fancy going doing a bit of weeding nah balls to that can't stand weeding um, shall we do some weeding with a tractor fuck yeah let's do that or Shall we go and water stuff by hand or flick the irrigation on or um, shall we just do nothing? Uh, which doesn't happen very often. But it's, it's just great to have that flexibility and do what you want. It's, I love, I absolutely love just walking around with my man boobs out. No way I'd do that in the UK. No way. I'd be scared that the neighbour would see me with my bloody rolls of fat. Although I am quite buff now, you know, there's still a few bits that need a nip and a tuck here and there. Um, yeah, I, I, I walk out, I have a piss on my coconut trees, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a happy man. Toon's still refusing to uh, help out increasing the nitrogen levels around our coconut trees, but um, I, I, I say it's lack of commitment. In at number 21 getting to see the stars and sunsets and sunrises i'll get a grip no <laughs> i am a fan of this um some of the photos that we've got and i'm not a photographer um just on even on a pants camera it's, it's breathtaking some of the sights you get and uh, again on that on that um facebook group some of the photos that these guys have collated over the years oh it's brilliant it is really really good never boring to see that sort of thing and the stars I mean, it doesn't matter where you are in the world you can see stars we know that but um when you're away from the village so we're about two two k just over two k away from our nearest village um of course there's very very little light pollution so you uh, you do get some really clear skies and no other lights detracting from the uh, the stars so that is a great one. The only place that I've been to that's come close to that was when Toon and I used to go camping in Anglesey, North Wales, and uh, used to get some brilliant, brilliant um, sunsets and stars at night there. Number 22, weight loss. 
I, I, I was a bloater. There's no two ways about that. Back in the UK, I was living on fast food. I was drinking every night and uh, just bloody bin dipping in bloody service stations every single day of the week. Uh, sat behind the wheel of a car uh, nearly every day. Um, eating lunches that were prepared for me while I was out um, instructing. So you, you get what you were given half the time. And uh, ow, I never had a heart attack. Is it? It's just, it's baffling. Back again, guys. There's a bit of a delay there. Um, my SD card got full. I've been trying to uh, record everything in a higher definition these days. Uh, a couple of you guys said this resolution's a bit panned, so unfortunately I, I can only record about 35 minutes at a time, which means I've been I've been gassing quite a bit. I, I had anticipated uh, one minute per um, point, so 30 points, even with my maths, that's, that's 32 minutes. Well, I've just seen the missus coming back from the hospital. So I just heard her say, what was he doing? Tamalai. Oh, banana trees. Oh, action, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, so let's try and get this wrapped up then. Let's get it back on track. Uh, I believe we were on weight loss. Yeah, I was a Barry Bethel. Um, I'm not now, I could lose a bit more, but it doesn't matter. The missus loves me and my love handles, so we're all right there. Most people lose weight when they're out in the sticks. It's because their missus makes them eat healthy. It's not easy to get hold of a cheeseburger, uh, unless you go and get a microwave one from your 7-Eleven. So, <clears throat> it's no, you've got no option but to lose a bit of weight. Number 23, waking up in the morning. Well, I think that's a bonus no matter where you live in the world, isn't it? Um, there's no guarantees in life that you will wake up in the morning, but it's always a bonus if you do. Um, what I would say about this is you have no sort of like heavy weight on your shoulders when you wake up. You know, there's no dread. Um, Monday mornings. Well, no, I tell you what, it used to be Sunday mornings because a lot of the time I used to su travel on the Sunday evening. So as soon as you wake up in the morning, the brain starts ticking over what you've got to prepare and uh, load up in your van ready for your, for your next course. So there's none of that anymore. You get up in the morning and uh, I wouldn't say I, I spring out of bed full of uh, vigor. And, uh, but it's, uh, it's enjoyable. Well, it is for me and Toon anyway. Number 24, sleep any time of the day. I tell you, when I first moved out here, I had siestas every single day. I've never done it before in my life, apart from a, a sneaky week's holiday here or there. I was crashing out and, and I, what I put it down to, I said to Tony, I said, three years being separated from Toon full time, just sort of like doing three months in and a month back in the UK, just living out of a suitcase. It did, it, it, I've said it before, it takes its toll on you. You know, we're all, we're all human and you can't keep sustaining that for an indefinite period of time. Well, if you, if you, if you can, then you're, uh, you're mustard in my eyes. But um, yeah, so just crashing out. It, it feels, it felt guilty doing it to start with, but you can bloody get used to it. Now it's, uh, I don't feel that I need them anymore. I can't remember the last time I had a kip during the day. Toon sometimes has a bit of a power kip, uh, but I don't know whether that's still to do with a little bit of thyroid issue or not. Let's have a wander down here. So this isn't our land now, this sugar cane bit. We've officially left the farm. Number 25. It feels like it's one long Sunday. Well, not for me, like I just said, Sunday was a shit day for me because it was the day that I used to have to leave Toon back in the UK. Uh, in the end, we sold our poultry and got rid of the dogs and Toon spent her last 18 months in the UK traveling around with me wherever I was delivering a course. Uh, I'd book her into the hotel with me and uh, that's what we did. But prior to that, bloody hell, I was leaving mid 
mid to late afternoon or early evening on a Sunday and then not getting back till almost midnight on a Friday or Saturday morning. Wash your pants, clean your balls, off out again. So um, yeah, it, now it every day feels the same out here, which isn't great for everyone, but for me, for me it is. I've, I've been waiting for this. It feels like all my life, but yeah, for about 14 years I've been waiting for this. Uh, number 26, being cold at 23 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm in my flip flops and my shorts and a t-shirt and I've got me my big Mexican hat on with my sunglasses. It's just beautiful isn't it? I know not everyone likes the uh, the intense heat but today I don't know what it is today. I think it's about 30, 32. That bloody do me. Um, the, last, the last week my toes have been a bit cold in bed at night so I've actually put a bit of a duvet over my feet. Uh, we don't have aircon. Uh, I'm not really a fan of it. Uh, we just have plenty of fanage throughout the evening. 27. Um, flowers and fruit in your backyard all year. Yeah, I mean, the flowers out here. Considering how harsh the weather can be, I mean, the relentless sun. Um, you would think that everything just flipping wilts and dies in the, in the intense heat, but no, it seems like this time of year, you get some of the best flowers when it's most arid and most hot. It's uh, well, perhaps not so hot, but when, when it's most dry. I'm not really up with the flowers, but, um, and we're not particularly good at growing them. We need to get our heads around that because uh, we need to make the place look nice. Still looks like a bloody gypsy site. Always reminds me of that. Um, that set in uh, the movie Snatch, the bloody gypsy pikey site. Oh, our place looks like that at the moment. Still a building site. Number 28, living in your boxer shorts. I don't do boxer shorts myself or budgie smugglers. I, I, I wear those shrunk things. I don't like my balls hanging down. Certainly as I'm getting older, that's never good. Uh, and I don't like garrotting me, uh, me old chestnuts either. So uh, yeah, walking around in your trunks, that's good. Uh, it, it just feels, feels great. I get, I get nagged a bit if uh, I've got my man boobs out and someone comes to buy some duck eggs or something. So to, to me, I think I look minging half the time. And uh, I'm, I'm always bloody dirty. Um, but no, Toon doesn't like any of my uh, man flesh on show when, when women come to, uh, to buy produce from the farm. But uh, hey ho, I suppose it's natural, isn't it? I mean, once a woman sees me, how could they possibly feel satisfied with their fella at home? But hey ho, I am just a man, remember? Number 29, almost there. Uh, cheap rent, oh fuck me. <laughs> Honestly, I have not written these. Cheap rent, yeah, our, our rent's cheap, isn't it? 1,500 baht, move in there, and fucking wreck the place. Um, yeah, our first rent out here was uh, 1,500 baht, that was living in the town. Uh, and then we moved into the village, that was 800 baht, but I, I, I would say you do get what you pay for. Um, <clears throat> it was pretty bloody basic. So when you think back what we got for our money there, ours is bloody dirt cheap that we rent out, but hey ho, um, it is what it is. So if, if, you, uh, if you don't wanna be a skin flint quite as much as we were, if your budget is a little bit higher uh, than ours was, um, try and find somewhere for about 3,000 and you'll get something really, really nice. It's uh, up to about 2,000, it's, it's, uh, some of it's pretty grim. And number 30, the last one, eating outside all year round. Well, you should be cooking outside all year round anyway. Bloody hell, Thai cookie. I've tried to explain to a few people that have never lived with a Thai woman. When they start cooking up, lads, it's, it is really a health issue if it's done indoors and I don't care what extractor fans you've got or your hood's got over your over your burners or whatever um, when they're dry frying 
their chilies and that sort of thing and do, making their pastes. If you're not cooking outside, bloody hell, you need asbestos lungs to get through it. So uh, cook outside, it, that's, that's, that's our take on it. Uh, all the Thai people do, unless they're sort of like westernised or some of the people living in Bangkok and places like that and they've got sort of like western style kitchens. I better start heading back, I might get raped out here. Um, Hopefully it'll be by about 20 women cutting sugar cane somewhere, but hey -ho. Um Yeah, eating outside, it's, it's great, but, and here's the big but, uh, the bugs. <laughs> Don't sit under a light, um, because some of the bugs are minging if you don't spot them before they go down your cake hole. Uh, of course the mozzies. Um, well, it's not an issue for us. We use the old monitor lizard piss or the uh, the lemongrass water. Uh, that works well. Uh, or you can slap a bit of DEET on. There's loads of things you can do. But um, bugs, really, that, that, that's about it. I mean, sometimes when you get stuff like mangachon and... Uh, what the fuck's the other one? Toon's not here to us now. Now I'm buggered, isn't I? I'm far from home and can't remember the name of the other bug that gets in your bloody soups and everything. Uh, Mang Mao, that's it, the piss one. Um, yeah, so it depends what time of year it is. If you're just coming into the rain season and you slip a light on there, flick a light on then, Jesus. You're, you're getting by the bloody bucket loads in your bowl. Uh, that's when we normally collect them for the fish pond or for, for tunes, alternative to popcorn to watch a movie at night. But apart from that, eating outside is great. So we do for all our meals. We've hardly got anything in the house. We have got a little table and chairs there, but that's for when mum comes, if the bugs are too bad, we'll just dive in there. Uh, or we might use it to have a game of Uno on or something like that. So that's it, that's the, I was gonna to say top 30, but that was in no particular order. Um, so a big thanks to all you guys from the Rural Life Thailand group. I couldn't have done this without you. Well, I could have done, but it wouldn't have been quite so comprehensive. Um, and you know me, I, I, I probably don't think along the same lines as most people anyway so it would have caused a lot of uh, a lot of reaction saying Lee you're totally wider the mark here here and here so these are the guys that are doing it have been doing it for years uh, it's nice just to get a little bit of an insight for me personally if I had to cherry pick a few for me living 24 7 with my missus is probably the biggest thing. I had so many years living away from her, or working away from her. Uh, I do really, really value that. I know a lot of guys like their own space. Go down to Boozer, have a few pints with the lads. Uh, but to me, you know, it's uh, I'd trade that any day of the week for that. But I do, I do miss that as well. <laughs> uh, another thing, Christmas Day with the family back in the UK. That was always a special day for me. So that was a little bit strange this year. That was my first Christmas day here, but we still had a good time. Of course, your family. I was gonna say family and friends, but you know, friends still stay in touch with if you want to. Um, but there's always a trade, isn't there? Moving anywhere in the world. You can't take everyone with you and no one want, not everyone wants to go with you anyway. Uh, and this lifestyle isn't for everyone but if you're coming out here guys if you really are considering seriously considering moving out into Thailand certainly if you're on a limited budget have a look at your options in the rural areas if you're on a really strict budget somewhere like well don't come here Kampang Pet you will get a lot for your money but remember I, I was one of the fans on the list of uh, less tourists, so don't come here, will you? Uh, go down the road somewhere else. Um, but yeah, you, you, you can get some cracking deals. 
Uh, the main thing is get away from those bloody agencies. You know, have a look at an area that you quite like and then spend a week driving around, going through the villages and get your missus to do the negotiations. You stay well in the background, otherwise you'll get your bloody arsehole ripped open. They will skank you like you won't believe. Uh, so, I think that's it. It's enough bloody blah, isn't it? Uh, and some of the downfalls. I'll tell you what we'll do. Not all of you will like the rural side of things in Thailand. So for those of you that aren't living in rural Thailand and would never dream to do so, just stick a comment in the section under the description on why um, you'd never dream of living in rural Thailand. Or if you have, and it just wasn't for you, it was an absolute shocking experience, then pop it down there, that would be good. All right then, as always guys, thanks for watching. Is one of our few flowers. Not bad, is it? Hang on, viewfinder's not on. It's a beauty. And that, in Thai, is called purple flower tree. Thanks for watching. Ta-da for now.